please hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell to keep up to date with our latest videos. Good afternoon. Following on from our recent video on data integrity and what the guidelines contain, we'll be releasing short practical videos to show how the Yokogawa Smart DAC Plus series chart recorders comply with these guidelines. Today, I will demonstrate some of the key functions through the GX20 chart recorder hardware, like I have here, including security settings and the recent audit trail enhancements. So as we've seen on our last video, the data integrity guidelines can be summarized by ALCOA. ALCOA stands for Attributable, Legible, Contemporaneous, Original and Accurate. So the recorded data must clearly show the who, the what, the when and the why. So we're going to show you some of the functions and features that have been added as part of a firmware upgrade that was released by Yokogawa last year, which focused primarily on adding features for the data integrity compliance. But firstly, like any system uh, that is compliant to 21 CFR Part 11 guidelines, in order to access the system, you need to log in. So you're selecting a name from a list and you have two unknowns, in this case, a user ID and a password. and now you're into the system. So one of the first new features I want to show you is rel relating to the enhancements to the security settings, which is where you set up your administrative and user level accounts. So if we go into settings and down to security settings, firstly, if we go into basic settings, you can see you cannot edit this data while the recorder is in record mode. As a standard feature on all of the chart recorders that in the GX series, you can enable Active Directory synchronization. So to, using your Windows login account and, and passwords, it will automatically synchronize with that. If you're using a local level, you can define now to add a password policy, which previously uh, was set at default, where now you can set a minimum character length, define whether the password should include upper lowercase numerical characters or symbols. And you can also give operators uh, an advance notice of when their password is about to expire. Another new feature that's been added is under user settings. So previously you had the option of setting either an admin or a user level account, but now they've added an additional level known as second admin. And second admin essentially allows you to set up a, a, like a super user account, which can set up other user accounts, unlock accounts or reset passwords for people that may have got locked out. So it's an ideal level to set for the likes of a shift supervisor who maybe you don't want to give full access to all of the configuration settings, but who may need that level of access to enable them to add new operators, reset any accounts, etc. And it's a nice new feature of the system. When you come out of that, then you can define that admin property. So admin authority level, we can set, as I've set it here, that the basic settings of the configuration are locked, but they can access user account levels. So essentially, as I said, it's like a super user on the system. Another feature I want to focus on is relating to the audit trail and the enhancements that they've made relating to data integrity here. So if I start by making a small alarm set point change, for example, so I can go into channel one, change the alarm set point, select save. It's now forcing me to enter a comment that's going to be linked to that change. So I can select from a predefined list of comments or enter a free comment which could be, for example, a reference to a change control. And once I enter that, it is now saved with that change. So now if I go into the audit trail, browse, log, and event log, I can see all of the events uh, or actions by users on the system. So the change I just made, 
is showing you that it went from 29 to 30 and if I select the comment it makes reference to the change control that I had entered in just a minute ago. Other nice features, so you can see all of the operations are here in the auto trail. So for example, another feature that they've added, if you make a change, if I go to set parameter, you can see that there's been a change in the IO channels and the configuration file reference. Then if I go to set difference, it's showing me what the original config file was and the new config file that's been generated because of that change. And if I click on show differences, it now shows me specifically the change that was made. In this case, a switch was enabled on the alarm and that switch was number one. One of the last features I want to show you today is around alarm management. So these Yokogawa chart recorders that we supply can be used both in batch and continuous monitoring applications. And one of the more common, I suppose, applications we see in recent times is around EMS or environmental monitoring. So like in this configuration, you have clean room temperature, humidity, differential pressures. You might have product storage or warehouse monitoring. Um, and in these scenarios, no different than in batches, as well as providing secure, reliable data and accurate data, the management of alarms is, is very important and to be able to notify people by email or by local indication on the system and also to ensure that it meets all the compliance requirements also. So if I just generate a quick alarm, you can see channel one has gone into alarm, so it was set at a high alarm and you notice that the alarm has changed from red into gray, which means it's back in a good condition. However, it is giving us a notification that there is an alarm on that channel. So I can click on that channel and I notice that I need to acknowledge an alarm. I can see that that's flashing because it hasn't been acknowledged. I click OK. And like with the configuration change, some of the enhancements also include the ability to force operators to enter a comment or a reason for that alarm, be it when they've resolved the issue. Um, and again, I can select a predefined comment from a list or enter a reason such as door open on freezer, for example. And that gets applied to the record. You'll also see I had pre-configured the system that in the event of an alarm, it would enter a comment high temperature in clean room, for example, doesn't correlate with my comment. But if I go now to my alarm summary, I can see a full list of the events that the alarm had occurred. It was a high alarm, what time, when it went back out of condition or back into condition, into a good condition, and when it was acknowledged. And again, I can also go to my auto trail and I can see the sequence of events where from an operator point of view that I had applied uh, an acknowledgement to that alarm. So thank you for listening in today and on our next video I will focus on the software element of the Yokogawa Smart Deck series and looking at historical files that have been generated and how to access the alarms, the audit trail and to analyze the process data from that software.